It's hard to overstate the cultural impact stock car racing has made across the state of North Carolina. What is now the largest racing series in America evolved from these windy, mountainous roads. So much of North Carolina racing history is still alive today. Let's explore the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail. Well, we sure aren't in Rockingham anymore. We have focused very heavily on the motorsports portion of this Moonshine and Motorsports tour. Of course, Moonshine goes hand in hand with the early days of NASCAR. To start today's video, we're here in Raleigh to visit the North Carolina Museum of History, the Sports Hall of Fame. We got here bright and early. I think the doors just opened up, but we're gonna go take a look inside. I'll show you some of the highlights. I definitely wanna check out the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame, see what kind of racing stuff they may have. No time like the present. Well, in this case, the past. Let's go see what's inside. Oh wow, when you first walk in to the left, please do not touch, but they have Dale Earnhardt. Wow, his 2000 Chevy Monte Carlo on display. We'll go check out the uh, North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame exhibit in a few minutes, but this is a nice uh, warm welcoming. Dale Earnhardt, of course, is from Kannapolis, North Carolina, which is I think roughly an hour or so outside of Charlotte, so uh, Makes sense that Dale Sr. would be in the North Carolina History Museum. I'm sure he's up in the uh, Hall of Fame in the uh, second or third floor as well. All right, let's check out this History of North Carolina exhibit. Most of the exhibits in this museum are free to uh, enter and to explore. Ever wonder why they're called Tar Heels? Well, North Carolina is the world's leading source of tar, pitch, turpentine, and rosin. Although according to this exhibit, they still don't know exactly who coined the phrase or where the name Tar Heel originated exactly. There is so much worth exploring just in this main North Carolina history exhibit. Highly encourage you, if you're in the Raleigh area, to come check this place out. Oh, now this is cool. We've been talking all this time about cars, right? But North Carolina is actually well known for a different form of transportation. First in flight. At least that's what it says on the license plates around here. The first manned and powered flight was made in 1903 by Wilbur and Orville Wright in an aircraft just like this one you see hanging above my head. This is, this is a recreation. This isn't the actual plane they used, but it is a, an exact recreation of what the Wright brothers used out at Kitty Hawk. The first flight of the day apparently lasted only 12 seconds, uh, but the second one, later in the day, lasted 59 seconds, almost a full minute. It traveled 859 feet. The shortest track in NASCAR is the Coliseum, which at a quarter mile is like 1,300 feet. So as important, as historic as that first flight was, it wouldn't have even made it all the way around the LA Coliseum. <laughs> Back to cars, an early, actually the end of the Model T, the Ford Model T production, it's important to mention the Great Depression when discussing NASCAR's beginnings, moonshine running. A lot of the guys who were illegally hauling whiskey in the back of their cars, trying to escape the revenuers, they were doing so solely to put food on the table for their families. Eventually, folks began competing against one another and started organizing their own races, and it became, racing became its own industry. But for some people, for a time, it was seen as one of the only solutions. Awesome to walk through and experience the history of North Carolina. Great that it's free. Again, if you're ever in Raleigh, North Carolina, be sure to stop by the Museum of History. It's an official stop on the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail. And uh, on that motorsports note, let's head up to the third floor, I think, and check out the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. I'm sure there'll be at least a few racing legends we recognize. I just got word that they're planning to uh, kind of renovate and expand this area in the not so distant future, but I'd I'm excited to see what they have currently here. First person you see when you walk in, Michael Jordan, who uh, of course played at North Carolina, but lots of golf stuff and up above my head, these are, uh, I guess, inductees to the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. There's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, I recognize that face. Major League Baseball players, whoa, there's even more names up above my head over here. Let's see who we recognize. Lots of baseball players, golfers, some track and field, oh, football. No way, Joe West is in the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame. The MLB umpire, who doesn't love Joe West or maybe love to not love Joe West? Oh, and here at the end, race fans will recognize these names. Junior Johnson, Richard Petty, Lee Petty, Ned Jarrett. Hey, look at Humpy Wheeler, that's awesome. And underneath those banners, 
We have a beautiful Richard Petty race car on display. What car is this? It's a Pontiac. The Petty Blue and that Day Glow Orange always looks good. Doesn't matter what setting. I like the, the, the mannequin, the driver they have sitting inside there. That's pretty cool. To the left, they have one of Richard Petty's old fire suits behind glass. Whoa, check out this Daytona 500 jacket from 2007. Who is that that signed that? Is that Richard Childress? Yes, Richard Childress. That was a jacket that he actually wore. Oh, on this side, I missed this. A Dale Earnhardt fire suit and an old Ned Jarrett suit are on display over here. Look at these old trophies as well. This trophy right here is from Raleigh Speedway. And this cup right here comes from winning the 1954 Southern 500, Herb Thomas. I think he was driving a fabulous Hudson Hornet back in those days. This final hallway is dedicated to North Carolina's basketball legends, Mike Krzyzewski, Roy Williams. Awesome stuff. Now we're gonna go meet up with Secretary Reed Wilson. He's basically the head of the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. Get to talk to him a little bit about what makes the uh, Moonshine and Motorsports Trail special. The great history of NASCAR and racing in the state of North Carolina. Allow me to introduce to you Secretary Reed Wilson. It started with Governor Roy Cooper including in his proposed budget uh, $1 million to create a North Carolina Moonshine and Motorsports Trail and the legislature, in all their wisdom, included that in the budget that they passed and he then signed. Um, and we're really excited about it. Um, we have the first eight sites uh, identified and publicized, and it's an opportunity to educate people about this really unique, intertwined history of distilling and racing fast cars that we think North Carolina has that other states just don't have. We want people to know about it. I visited the NASCAR Hall of Fame a few weeks ago in Charlotte that does such a great job of telling the history of NASCAR, but it starts with stories of distilling in the mountains or at the coast where, you know, the people who were successful distillers not only made a good product, but they were able to outrace law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And so we want people to understand this really interesting history that's filled with incredible stories, interesting stories, wild stories um, that help not only, you know, create a, what is now a thriving distilling industry in the state, but also an incredibly important um, motorsports industry in the state. Really incredible of uh, Secretary Reed Wilson for taking some time to talk to us a little bit about his involvement with the Moonshine and Motorsports program. I'm due for a late lunch. I always hear about Carolina barbecue, east versus west. Uh, I've been recommended a place nearby here in the city, so watch my step. I think I'm gonna go try that out. We'll see, I'm from Texas, and in Texas, we're very proud of our barbecue, so, but I'll be curious to see how uh, Carolina barbecue compares. All right, I ordered a, a brisket sandwich. I'm not sure this is the most uh, straightforward or pure way to enjoy Eastern North Carolina barbecue, but here goes nothing. Yeah, I'd go so far as to say that's, that's excellent. One thing I have to mention since I'm here, but uh, basically directly next door to the State History Museum is the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. And I love uh, dinosaurs. It has absolutely nothing to do with the moonshine, motorsports, any of the above. But if you're coming to see one, might as well take five steps and see the other as well. <sighs> A long, tiring, but very rewarding day. Ugh. Got some exciting stops planned tomorrow. I'll see you in the morning. Welcome, my friends, to Level Cross, North Carolina. Home of the famous Petty family. And also home to Petty's Garage and the Petty Museum. I have never been here before. This was very much a last minute invitation. My buddy Roland, who actually now works at Petty's Garage, uh, knew I was gonna be in town and so he invited me out. I've seen photos, videos from this place, but I don't know a whole lot about it. But I think today, you and I both are gonna learn a lot about the Petties, their legacy, their history, and hopefully we're gonna see some pretty historic and epic race cars. Roland, appreciate the invite. Glad you're able to get this door unlocked for me. My pleasure, Eric. What are we gonna see? We're gonna see, you're gonna see a lot of cool things. This is, as a race fan, 
This is hallowed ground, okay? Yeah. What's up, dude? <laughs> hey, Thad Moffat, what How the heck? You? Uh, you told me I was gonna get the VIP tour. I didn't realize we we're gonna have uh, drivers giving me the yeah, tour. what's going on, man? Not much, but I'm excited to be here. Appreciate you having me. Yes, sir. This car right here has a lot of significance because it is uh, win number 198 and 199. Oh, wow. And, uh, it didn't quite make it to number 200. 200 <laughs> is in the Smithsonian. Oh, wow. Yeah, 10 Winston Cup championships. Oh, my goodness right here so uh, my great-grandfather Lee he won three of them and then of course Richard so this is seven. all of them right here yeah. holy cow that's amazing that's a heck of a centerpiece yeah. <laughs> to yeah. say the very least yeah wow people say or my mom always says my grandpa's a hoarder but he calls it a collector so he's got hey, if you got the space for it this yeah. is what I would do too yeah so, like pocket knives and guns he's always collected um, Very neat. And this is the start of his gun collection. Just so. this is just the start. Yeah. So where's the finish? Uh, there's a whole room <laughs> over there. We'll go in. All right. Yeah. So he uh, he was a big gun collector, and he got the 43rd one made of every gun, unless they made less than 43. That is. Uh, so like. I love that attention to detail. They only made 10, so he got the seventh for seven championships. Okay. <laughs> Genius. There you go. It's more dramatic this way. Ooh. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so over here is like all like, um, I guess family guns. So like Kyle's first BB gun, Kyle's grandpa's oh, it's fun. first So BB there's gun. sentimental value. Yeah, some sentimental stuff. Um, so this is my grandpa's first rifle. First, right? wow. And then Lee Petty's first rifle. And then um, Dang. their first Red Rider BB guns. And Oh, wow. This is the car, a replica of the car that uh, Lee won the very first 500 in. Wow. Um, so when they quit racing on the beach and they moved to the track, my great grandfather Lee won the very first uh, Daytona 500. So this is from 1959? Yes. Right? Yeah. 59. Very cool. Is the, does the real car just not exist anymore? Did it no, it just doesn't exist. Eventually anymore. got wrecked or something? Yeah. Wow. They tore it, ended up. That's um, cool though. This so, looks in insane. Yeah. Hard to imagine them going that fast in something like, <laughs> yeah. like this, right? No, I, yeah, exactly. In the late 50s, early 60s, the winningest car in NASCAR history. Oh, wow. So this is the one he won 10 in a row in, uh, 27 wow. races in one season. And then oh, yeah. um, the year before, it was a 66 with a different nose on it, and he actually won nine races this year. So this car alone accounts for 36 of his 200 wins. He could probably go out there and win today, you know, just <laughs> update the engine. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> That's how they used to hold him in the wow. seat. So the story behind it goes, they were testing at Daytona and grandpa said he could run faster, but the G forces were moving him so far right that his foot <laughs> would come off the pedal. Wow. And so he couldn't run wide open. So Dale went and uh, bought two by fours from Lowe's and <laughs> bolted him into the seat and they picked up four or five mile an hour. Um, wow. And so then they came back and engineered the little metal piece that way before uh, full containment seats were even a thing. I mean, innovative. Yeah. They would stand up here in front of the car with an air hose and baby powder. Mm -hmm. And that's what, how they figured out that uh, the air comes wow. in beside the I never hose. heard that. That's, yeah. a, that's crazy. Yeah. That's how they figured out. So. <laughs> Locked this off to begin with was just with a piece of metal, like instead of Lexan, like mm -hmm. we run now. Yeah. It was just they welded a piece of metal in there because the air would come straight back and set in the driver's Nice. Flat. Did other did it take long or did any other team eventually catch on to little things like that or did it take years for that? See, to... I don't. That's yeah. you kind of have to would be there. Like I, I don't know. Dale and Grandpa were definitely the first ones to yeah. do it. Yeah. They were pioneers. Yeah. I'm sure this is a popular photo op in here. <laughs> yeah, for, for the kids that come in here. And it's crazy when I do stuff with Grandpa, like 90% of the kids know him as Mr. The King instead yeah. of Richard Petty. <laughs> I love that he, does he answer to that? Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. The King. Mr. The King. Yeah. So this was the championship trophy in 75. Um, Grandpa said he was tired of getting the same trophy. So they gave him a jukebox. A jukebox. With all the country hits. And this is him in 75. Um, wearing that suit and so we were cleaning out the museum during COVID in 2020 and we found the suit oh my gosh 45 years later it still fits him 
And <laughs> That's goals right there. <laughs> Stay in shape. <laughs> Up until 08, this was like a fully functional race team. Okay. Yeah, so like when we moved um, to Mooresville in 08, they were still oh. racing out of here. And this was like all, so Fab was like in the back, and then there's a uh, setup plate over here where they've set everything up. We have just about every car you raced in, in storage. Mm -hmm. And so even down to the go-karts and the legend cars of course back there wow um the start this is all the way through pretty much at petty this was of course the last race in atlanta in 92 Jeff oh Lewis really first race yeah that was a very important race. that was a crazy championship battle all the stuff that was going on at the same time yeah like a year's worth of storylines in one weekend yeah so this is the beginning and the end Oh, I uh, see. Right here. And then, okay. So back in the day, that was uh, a cool suit. So I was looking at that. That looks like a horror movie monster yeah. suit a little bit. Yeah. And, like uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon or something. They had a lot of, they were, like I said, way ahead of their time. Mm -hmm. um, but they had a lot of mess ups in their cool suits back then. I can and imagine. So they still have issues with them now. Yeah. And like, whew. Are there any trophies that your grandfather has like said that he's either lost or given away? I mean, he's, yeah. there's probably some are in other museums, but has he like thrown away or lost any of them? Yeah, he can't account for all <laughs> 200 for sure. And so like when they started accumulating so many trophies, they had nowhere to put them. So they put as many as they could in his house. Mm -hmm. And then they opened the museum in 88 and they didn't really have like a good display for the trophies. So people would come in and like break a piece off oh. or like, so then... <laughs> They opened a museum like with glass like this. <laughs> with so proper that, security. Yeah, with proper security. So. Wow. What is this huge one? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that says Texas, right? Texas, Texas 500. Texas yeah. World Speedway. Oh my gosh, that's about an hour, hour and a half from where I live in College Station. I had no. It looks, the bigger in Texas uh, meme. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they really took that seriously. Whoa. Yeah. Hey, they got one of your cars in yeah. here. There you go. So there's my Trans Am car that I'm racing uh, this season. Yeah. So to, uh, we're having Petty Fest, and so the car's here. Yeah. We raced in Road Atlanta. We brought it back here. We're going to put it on display at Petty Fest. And, Race car and show car all in one. Yeah. I like it. That looks super cool, though. That's really clean paint, like paint job. Yeah. When we had um, like a race team out of here, and they, um, the pit crew would come here every day and they would do pit practice behind the building back here. But this was like their workout room uh, where it says physical I see. fitness area. Physical fitness department. <laughs> That's a fancy word for gym. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can show it to you. This is yeah, I'll take that. Is there, is there much still in there? Or is it, yeah, it, I mean, it, I come over here and work out all the time. Like okay, oh there. shoot, yeah. It's still a fully functional Oh, gym, yeah. But when we had a pit crew, it was. Uh, this is where they worked out. Like as you can see, it's as as they left it in Darlington in 2008. <laughs> they did wow. 12:25 was their stop, and for the 43 team. And the, I love the old the pictures on the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that was their fastest stop. Untouched. Oh, that's cool. Oh, you got like set up as a little little peek in. Yeah, so the wooden scales, the RC Cola machine. Uh, this is it. This is this is what they started with. And from the stories I've heard, they still use those wooden scales there up until the 70s to scale their race cars no and take way. them to the tracks. Those exact those like exact pieces. Scales, yeah. Holy cow. We saw where it usually sits. Yeah, it's usually that. over there, yeah. So here's the actual car. It's yeah. been moved outside. It's Richard Petty's first race car. I love the old logo. That's so cool. Look, yeah, there you go. Convertible, just sliced off. We like giving tours because we like for people to like know the history and the correct history of yeah. this place, right? And Dale and Grandpa were around for all of it. So they're the best tour givers, of course, <laughs> because they were here. For every bit of it um but from what i've taken away from it I you soaked up a lot yeah i soaked up quite a bit of it oh boy it just started raining so i'm having to hustle in my car but a huge thank you oh my gosh to uh 
Thad Moffitt, uh, the folks here at the Petty Museum, Petty's Garage, my buddy Roland for uh, helping set this up. Unbelievable, we got to hear all about Richard Petty, Lee Petty, the Petty family history from a member of the family. Really appreciate Thad doing that. Hope you all enjoyed tuning in. It's been a really busy week here in North Carolina, but I've been having an absolute blast. Thank you all for following along. I'll see you again real soon.